One week after the majority in Parliament requested an emergency sitting of Parliament, Speaker of Parliament Alban Bagman is still yet to reconvene the House. Sources within the majority are alleging the Speaker may be breaching the Constitution and the standing orders of the House. Let's get more on this. Kukwa Santi is our Parliamentary Affairs correspondent. He's joined me in the studio. Kukwa Santi, when did the majority make the request for uh, the Speaker to reconvene Parliament? Well, on Thursday 1st May, we had indication that the majority were pushing to get the Speaker to reconvene Parliament for this emergency sitting. And so we understand that exactly on the 2nd May, that is when this letter reached the Speaker of Parliament. On the 1st May, we had gotten indication that the letter had already gone to the Speaker of Parliament. Mm. But from information we are getting from the Office of the Speaker of Parliament, they, re inf they, they actually received this letter on Friday, 3rd May, at 11.43 a.m. That is the majority leader's memo from Alexander Afenio Markin to the Speaker. Attached to that, over 100 members of Parliament on the majority side requesting an urgent emergency session of parliament to consider what they called key government business. So 11.43 a.m. on the 10th May, that was a Friday, exactly a week today, the Speaker of Parliament received this letter. What does the Constitution and the standing orders of the House say about this? Well, if you look at Article 1123 of the 1992 Constitution of Ghana, it says that notwithstanding any other provision of this article, 15% of members of parliament may request a meeting of parliament and the speaker shall within seven days after the receipt of the request summon parliament. That is what Article 1123 of the 1992 Constitution says. If you look at Order 53 of the Standing Orders of the House, it, it, it literally repeats what, what, what the Constitution says. It, it says, despite any other provision, 15% of members of parliament may request a meeting of parliament and the speaker shall within seven days after the receipt of the request summon parliament. The parliament shall reconvene within seven days after the issuance of the notice of the summons. So you look at these two constitutional and standing orders, they all say that the speaker of parliament shall, it's a mandatory shall, that within seven days of the majority leader or any member of parliament getting 15% of MPs to sign on to this, requesting for emergency sitting of the house, the house shall convene. And if you look at the dates now, the, 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 we understand the majority leader wrote this memo on the 2nd of May, it got to the speaker on the 3rd of May. If you start counting from then up until today, mm. we have six days. That is still within the seven days. And so the expectation was that as of today, the Speaker of Parliament should have written to the majority leadership and also announced by way of an instrument of invitation requesting that all members of Parliament reconvene to sit for this emergency system. The Speaker of Parliament, as we know now, has not done so in fact, our understanding is that he is still not in the country as of now. He's still outside the country undertaking some official duties. But the concern of the majority is that he may be breaching the constitution, given that he is within the seven days, he has not requested. But because on Monday, Monday would have been the seventh day, and right after that, he would have left with the, within the seven days window, and that is why they are piling this pressure on him to act now. Mm. Uh, have we heard from the majority mm. on what they intend to do mm. about this? I've been trying all morning to try and get the majority leadership to get to speak on what exactly their, 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 their strategy is. It's exactly a week today also that they organized that news conference where they, 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 they piled the pressure on the, on the Speaker of Parliament to, to do this recall. But sources are in the majority are tightly a bit about the situation. What we, are, what we are getting told is that they want to exhaust all their mechanisms. They want to exhaust all their processes. But they say this is something they are taking seriously. This is the constitution of the republic. This is to the standing orders of the house. And they say if the speaker is found to have bridged it, they'll be pushing to get him removed even. And that is how serious they attach to, 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 to this invitation that they have, they have sent to the speaker. They say the day has not ended. If the speaker can't act, he should act and reconvene the house to sit. Thankfully, I've been joined by Roxin Nelson Dafiamekwa, who is MP for South Dine, a member of the Constitutional uh, and Parliamentary Affairs. Uh, grateful for your time. Do you agree the Speaker is breaching the Constitution and standing orders? Sorry? Hello? Do you agree that the Speaker is breaching the Constitution and the standing orders of the House by not responding uh, to the majority that requested is, for a recall? Who is making that allegation and what is the case? I've just, I've just been called into the program, so... 
Mr. Dafiyame, um, some seven days ago, the majority leader, Fenyo Makin, called and they actually wrote to the speaker for demanding that the speaker recalls the house uh, for some urgent government business. And they say if the speaker hasn't responded after seven days, it's, will be, he will be breaching the constitution and the standing orders of the house. And we're asking if you agree the speaker is actually breaching the constitution and the standing orders of the house. First of all, I need to know when the majority sent a motion to the speaker for request for speaker to summon the, the house. It was on the I 2nd moved. of May. On the 2nd of May? Yes. And today is the 10th of May? Yes. And they, they have evidence that they delivered the, the request to cut. Hold on for me. When did the speaker receive the letter? Well, so the letter from um, the information we are getting from the speaker's office, it was received on the 3rd of May, that is Friday, at 11.43 a.m. Okay. So if you count from Friday till today, that is exactly a week. But in terms of weekdays, that is five days. If you add the Friday itself that the speaker received the letter, that would be six days. Okay. Now, the speaker has not breached the Constitution not bring the standing orders. So let's be very clear about that. Uh, the majority leader knows what he has to do under the standing orders. The standing orders are very clear. What is the procedure? If any time I step out of a bit, the first time it comes clear, you break the procedure supported by six pages of at least 15% of the 265, which Sums up of 43 if that if that requirement is met, then the speaker will have to, within the standing orders, issue that someone a recall within seven days. So the issue is, yeah. it is only yeah, that... of speaker's secretary because the in the absence of the speaker. We have the first deputy speaker to, uh, who, who will act. In the absence of the first deputy speaker, the second deputy speaker will act. Is the majority leader saying that in the absence of the speaker, nobody can act? The first deputy speaker is a member of parliament on the ticket of the MPP. The second deputy speaker is a minority, is an independent member of parliament who is caucusing or doing business with the majority in parliament. So, so what is their beef? But the first deputy speaker can only act if he is given the permission by the speaker. Correct? Is that, is that, is that, is that, is that the law? Is that what the constitution says? It's only when the, the speaker is unable to perform the functions. That's when the deputy speaker steps in. Yes, yes. So I am saying that if the speaker is outside of the jurisdiction, can the first deputy speaker act? And if the first deputy speaker is unavailable, can the second deputy speaker act? They should stop this foul propaganda against the speaker. The speaker, I recall, issued a letter two weeks ago telling them that it's available, it's unavailable to work. They went to sleep. And then they woke up last week to claim that they issued uh, a request for the house to be recalled. If that was sent to the office of the speaker in his absence, I believe that the secretariat of the speaker, which is also made up of the, by the second and first deputy speaker, can act. But the speaker made it clear that even in his absence, the house can be successfully recalled. And I believe that they have even bothered to read that letter. That is why they will go, they will go to the media and say all sorts of things. But let the record reflect that when the House is properly uh, called upon for the Speaker to recall the House, the appropriate thing will be done. So the call that the Speaker, the threat that the Speaker is in breach of the Constitution is neither here nor there. It is hot air. It is time the majority put their House in order and do the appropriate thing. So the first Deputy Speaker can actually act on this? Or, or is that if, what the Constitution says? Right, right. so if it's not available, the second Deputy Speaker can also act it, on it. Aisha, is that not what the Constitution prescribes? 
In any case, is that not what has been happening for all these years? That the absence of the speaker, the president, speaker, function? Right. I'm grateful for your time. Roxon Nelson Dafiamekoy is MP for South Dai. He's also a member of the Constitutional Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee of Parliament. So we'll see how this unfolds as the days take for the office of the Speaker to act on this letter.